About a month ago I was walking around the flea markets of Antwerp to look for some C-mount lenses for my camera that I'm using at the moment. C-mount lenses are old vintage lenses that were used for film movie cameras and also for CCTV cameras and therefore they are very cheap and sometimes very high quality for what you're paying for them. And I actually found a guy that sold a bunch of lenses, but I didn't only find lenses, I also found some old vintage CCTV cameras. I didn't really find that much information about it online. All I know is that the model number is the MTV-13X11C. So in this video I'm going to show you how I turned this little camera into a portable camcorder and I'm going to show you everything that you need for this specific model. Just for a closer look, this is the camera. It has two threaded ports on the top and the bottom, which we're gonna use to create some kind of handle for the camera. Here in front you can see the sensor. It's a tiny sensor. If I'm guessing, if I had to guess, the sensor is about eight millimeters wide and five millimeters tall. So it's really, really tiny. This is gonna be the brain of our camera. It's a mini DVR. It's basically just a small little device where the video signal can go in there, it goes through the machine, it records onto an SD card, and then there it has a little output jack for the video signal to go into a display. The display that I'm using is a 4.3 inch car display. This one was originally made to install a rear view camera into your car, and this one just has the old VGA video input so we're gonna need an adapter cable for this one. So only the mini DVR has an internal battery so we don't need to worry about powering that one but the camera and the display both need 12 volts power input. This power cable it just has a standard USB 5 millimeter output in 12 volts and it just has a small little regulator here and an on and off switch and this is gonna be the cable that's gonna power the camera. For the display it's pretty much the same thing only that the switch looks a little bit different. So now we're gonna need to figure out how to get the video signal from the camera into the mini DVR and then from the mini DVR into the display. And for that I need two cables and those are first this cable right here. I have some footage on what I did to it but because of some focusing issues I had to reshoot all of this again. So this cable is already the one that's working. So I've got everything hooked up and when I put both cables here we technically should see a video signal coming out into the display but no matter what I do I don't see anything. I think I must have done something wrong here on the other side of the cable. Okay, so after some thinking, and it turns out that the plug that the other cable had was the problem because this one has just one single context here on the long side and I actually needed one that has, that has multiple poles here. I don't even know how they're called, I'm just making up words now. And when I put this one in and I connect the white cable to one part and the red cable to the other one I get a signal into the display. I already cut away the heat shrink from this cable so I'm gonna have to redo that again anyway because I'm stupid but it turns out that everything is working fine. So I actually found out something else and I don't know if you can see it on camera but right now we have some vert vertical stripes here on the display and if I connect one pole to the black side which I think should be ground we remove all the vertical stripes from the display so I think 
I will connect the white cable here to the red one here and the black one to the black one. I feel like I'm doing rocket science right now. It's lovely. And this is pretty much the last piece. This is just the video signal output and the input for the display. In this configuration there is pretty much no way of really handling the camera and taking it around with you. So to do that I actually designed and 3D printed a handle for the camera. And I can just handle it like this. The handle actually has some threaded inserts and this just allows me to mount different styles of adapters on top of it. In my case I'm gonna have a lanyard holder and a display mount on the front and just a lanyard holder in the back. And with this the camera setup is pretty much complete. I know the cable management leaves a little bit to be desired but I wanted to keep everything a little bit longer in case I want to use this setup for any other camera that I might get in the future. This camera is one of the sickest things that I ever built. I'm so stoked on how it turned out. So and that's pretty much a wrap on my CCTV camcorder build. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions please leave them in the comments below. And yeah, I really hope I see you guys in the next one. Peace. Like and subscribe. This is an emergency update from the Antwerp Central Information Service. Over the past 48 hours, a coordinated act of sabotage has been carried out across the city's surveillance grid. Multiple public cameras were hijacked by unknown individuals marked with the tag Vision 11. The hijackings are a response to unchecked police violence. Officials are investigating links to known resistance circles. Citizens are reminded, tampering with civic vision systems is a punishable offense. Obey the curfew, do not engage, stay indoors, stay safe.